Nerds, welcome back. I'm Tyler. Uh, I built a bench this time. This is made to be outside. It's got, I stained it and sealed it. The top is joined using dowels and glue, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll go through that. I have a, a cool tool that I got for this. It was actually really cheap. One by tens on the top and one by fours for the structure and the slats. But I don't really have too much to say. Let's uh, jump into the video and take a look. All right, starting off, you can see the one by fours that I got were pretty rough, so I sanded them with my belt sander. And afterwards, it looked pretty nice. It was 80 grit sandpaper that I used there. I measured uh, different lengths for the structure. Um, you can see those in the cut list. I would suggest measuring though for you know the fit and the area that you're going to be using those in. All the legs here I cut, I used a stop block so it was nice and easy, uh, repeatable cuts. I set up this jig with these right angle brackets and all of these clamps so that I could easily recreate the legs over and over again. I had to do six pairs of legs and this just made it um, a lot easier than trying to individually clamp these, hold them in place, and then drill and screw. And by the way, these screws are uh, so awesome. Uh, I'll, t I'll show you in a little bit when I get to the tool VIP section, but I didn't have any splits with these and I thought for sure I was going to with these 1x4s. Awesome, awesome screws. I brought the right angle brackets over and um, this is where I'm attaching one of the legs to the longer rear uh, horizontal structure piece. Three screws in, uh, hold it in place, and then I used a spacer on the bottom to judge the distance that I want the lower horizontal structure to be. Again, it'll be three screws to hold this in place, but that spacer makes things really helpful. That way I don't have to you know, measure it out every single time and make sure I'm um, e equal distant from the bottom for each of these lower structures. And I did that uh, for both sides, and now I'm doing one of the end pieces. Take notice of how everything is lined here, how I have the longer structures going into the legs, and then the um, that side piece butting up against the that back structure piece. The idea is the same here, two screws to hold this together and using the spacer. I used the front face for this box as a spacer for this and a piece of scrap wood to hold it in place. I didn't really want to use pocket holes for this because they're not as strong. So I screwed it in from the back and then I screwed it in from the sides on the top and the bottom. Worked out really nice, nice and strong. I then used that 11.5 inch face piece and slid it in. The, the pressure was actually really nice on the top so I didn't have to clamp it. But I did have to clamp it here towards the bottom and I used a spacer to make sure that everything was set up right. Came back through with my drill, drilled my pilot holes, and then put two screws to hold it in together. I kept getting bothered by some flies, so I pulled my bug assault out and whacked them. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of pests bothering me while I'm trying to work on a project. Uh, go ahead and check out the tool VIP section while I talk about this bug assault. If you guys haven't heard about it, I have a review coming out. See you later. Now that the back and the right side is done, I'm making the front face. Um, again, same idea using those clamps and then I used the 18 and a quarter inch left side structure piece as a spacer basically. So I drew a line that way I could line it up afterwards I didn't have to hold it there in place and I drilled and screwed that together uh, on the top and the bottom. Then I took that same uh, left side structure piece and clamped it in place and did what I've been doing this whole time made sure everything was squeezed nice and tight, use those right angle brackets. Again, super helpful, um, really like those brackets. Put everything together here and it worked out great. I had a knot come loose, so I just squeezed a little bit of glue in there, wiggled it back and forth, and you know, the camera angle is not great here, my stupid hand's in the way, but wiggled it back and forth and then let it sit and it was fine afterwards. I measured for center of this front face and added a leg to the front and then a leg to the back in the same distance. Uh, that way we just have a little bit extra support there. Uh, these 1x4s aren't really strong, so they, they need just a, a little extra. And then I'm going to uh, drill these pocket holes and put these in place, and this is gonna add to that structure and just beef up the strength a little bit. I did it to the top, flipped it over, and did it to the bottom. I didn't want the actual pocket holes showing, 
so it's a little bit easier to put together this way. And the nice thing about using 1x4s for uh, furniture like this is it's, a, it's really light, so it's easy to maneuver. I took my 1x10s and I cut them at 84 inches, which is 7 feet, and then I ripped it to make sure that it fit with a 1 inch overhang. So keep that in mind. It, it all depends on how you you know you build um, your project, but um, I wanted a one inch overhang, and it didn't work out perfectly for me here. I needed to cut a little sliver for this little bench seat, and what what you want that to be is you want the sliver to be on the inside rather than the outside, and then you use a larger piece for that forward facing side. I used three eighths inch dowels and this jig to uh, join the top together. This jig, by the way, amazing, you guys. I used a collar on my drill bits, and this combination is killer. Um, this makes sure that I have the proper depth for the dowels to go in, so it's not too much or too little. I drew some lines, that way I knew that I was lining those dowels up perfectly, and you'll see here um, that the jig has a little alignment um, guide, I guess. That way that you can align them perfectly on both sides. So this was fantastic. W one thing to keep in mind is make sure that your boards are cut completely square. If you just go buy some 1x10s that are rounded cut, you're going to have some dips where the boards are joined. I did this over and over again. Uh, two dowels for the bench seats and five for the longer boards. It's very helpful to label your boards. Uh, this one's three, this one's three. Um, this one's two and so on and so forth. That way, when you're all done, you, you know that you have all the right sides together. I put the board up on its end. I put glue in the dowel holes, put glue on the dowels and on the edges of the board, hammered them in a little bit and then used a clamp to squeeze them all together. And that was very helpful. And I just repeated the process. Um, again, using the hammer uh, to put the dowels in, using glue on both sides and then using those clamps to squeeze it. You're gonna have some squeeze out. Um, you, you don't really have to worry about that too much. You can go back through, I'll show you in a second here. You go back through with a uh, chisel and you can just chisel that glue off. And um, afterwards, after everything's done, you're gonna want to clamp and keep the clamp pressure on those boards and then use calls. Calls are basically where you pinch the boards together and if you watch, you'll see how it straightens it and makes it more flat than curved how it was. I ended up using four sets of calls and three clamps to keep everything together. And after everything was done and dried, it actually worked out really well. And this is like I was telling you, I went through with a chisel and scraped all this glue squeeze out. It actually is a little bit therapeutic, um, if I'm being honest. I used wood filler afterwards to fill up any of the weird, see there's damage on these boards as well as non-perfect edges. So I just spread some of this wood filler in there. It's stainable and let it dry for about an hour or two and then came back and sanded everything off with my belt sander. You're gonna wanna make sure and hit all of your surface with, this, with your sander. That way when you go to stain, it'll stain evenly. Um, and I'll show you, I, I missed a spot and ended up having to redo it, but. Um, I do my roundovers too using my belt sander and it gives it kind of a like a homemade like farmhouse type of look so and I really like that and just uh, for reference this is 80 grit sandpaper that I'm using on this belt sander um, it takes quite a bit of material off so you might want to practice first if you're not used to it it's, it's really not that hard um, but the the end results really nice I then used 120 grit on my orbital sander and went through and you can see here it looks really nice and smooth there were a couple spots that i missed and and that's going to kind of affect the stain here you'll see in a second but um, i did that on all the roundovers and everything and it, it came out it looks really um, smooth i dusted everything off and i used pre-stain treatment and then my camera overheated it's 115 out in the garage so i didn't get me staining unfortunately the camera um, shut off and i, I didn't see it but I missed here with the sander, I missed here with the sander, and then along this front face. So I went back through, I stripped the stain off, I added pre-stain treatment, and I restained it. You're gonna wanna make sure that you dry up as much overlap as possible. That'll be pretty noticeable. It's not 
really well advised to restain. It, it'll typically be uh, fairly obvious, but this is going to be less obvious than what I had set up before. And it's not dried here, but um, you'll, you can kind of see where the overlap is. I went back over that and I dried it up a little bit with a rag. I flipped the top over and I sealed the bottom. That way, in case there's any moisture or anything, I don't have to worry about it. And then I flipped it back over and sealed the top. And this is with spar urethane. And, and I'll have all of these, uh, the materials that I used um, in the description below. But this, this actually worked out really nice. This is a satin finish, so it wasn't super shiny. Um, and then I laid down some brown painter's paper with some duct tape, that way it wouldn't move. I had the fan blowing really hard. It was super hot, like I was mentioning. I used some scraps to keep it off the ground, that way after I paint, it didn't stick to the paper. And I used a brush to get into the really complicated sections and I ended up switching over to a roller, which is so much faster. And I rolled paint onto every surface. I laid it on actually really, really thick. It's pretty nasty here in Phoenix when it comes to the sun, so I wanted to make sure I was protected. I used pre-stain and then stained and sealed the slats. Uh, there's a little smaller one that I'm kind of a dummy. I didn't think about it I had to end up ripping this one and then restain and seal the edges of that one I ripped this one to two and a half inches so it would fit you can tell it looks really nice afterwards now the Craig jig this this little portable one it really shines in a spot like this where either you didn't plan before or um, you know you, you decide what you're gonna do later you can you can draw these uh, pocket holes on the fly so that one was really helpful. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for that one. I then put the slats in after I pre-drilled my pocket holes. And you can kind of see the spacing where those pocket holes are at. And then I used my Ryobi nailer and nailed the crap out of those slats to hold them in place. And they're actually in there really good. Uh, I, I picked the whole structure up using just the slats and they're not coming out. The wood was pretty warped, so I used a clamp to hold the structure to the top and then screwed it all my pocket screws in. I bent all these brad nails over for extra support for the slats. And because it's all one by fours, it's actually fairly manageable, pretty light. And afterwards, I went through with stain and seal and hit all the brad nail holes and we're done. Everything's complete, you guys. And I'm really happy with this bench. It turned out really nice. It's a little different than uh, something normal, but Let's uh, take a look at the tools we used. All right, you guys, onto the tool VIP section for the build. Now I'm gonna try and run through these pretty quick. It's over 100 degrees here in Phoenix and I'm dying in this garage. So um, this is a section for those of you that aren't aware of where I go over tools that really helped during the build and pulled a lot of their weight and are fairly cheap. This one's the most expensive for sure and definitely not a necess necessity, but we'll get to that. So to start off, this is a uh, dowel jig that I got, and I, you saw in the video, this thing is fantastic. Um, it's got uh, a, a setup for alignment, and all I didn't have a single problem with this. This thing saved me issues, if anything, um, and so I, I really, really like this guy. I'll, I'll put links in for this stuff down below. I use this in correlation with dowels, of course, but also these collars, and that way when I was uh, drilling on my drill bit, this would stop the drill bit from going too deep and let me know that I had gone deep enough to fit those dowels. So if it wasn't, didn't go too shallow um, or too deep in that way, it, it fit just perfect. So I, I highly recommend this. And then these little collars are really cheap also. Um, number two is this, these right angle brackets. And I use these a couple different ways in this build. And like always, I really like these things. They They've been a ton of help for me. So if you're getting frustrated with things not turning out, you know, perfectly uh, square or, or at a right angle, these will help you out quite a bit. Um, I would consider looking into something like this. The third one, um, and I've been raving about these screws ever since I first tried them, but these are the no split uh, countersink screws with the star pattern head. These are fantastic screws. I thought for sure in my legs that I was uh, screwing together using uh, this right angle bracket, I thought for sure that, uh, that these were gonna split. Because I, I split one by fours almost every single time I use them. I didn't get one split with these. So good, so, so, so good. So I can't recommend these screws enough. These are an amazing tool um, to have and, and use consistently. Uh, 
The fourth one, like I was telling you before, is this Ryobi Brad Nailer 18 gauge up to two inch uh, nails. I, this has never let me down. I can't speak good enough about this as well. This has um, saved me a ton of time, a lot of effort, um, frustration. Wonderful tool to have around the shop. And the very last one, and this is a little bonus, is this Bug Assault. Now you guys see, saw me use the Lawn and Garden version in the video where I wasted a couple flies. Uh, this is one that they, the guys at Bug Assault sent me and it's more powerful than that one is. Um, I'm doing a review on this actually. It is a scorpion killer and scorpions are tough, man. And that video is gonna be really cool. So hit that uh, bell uh, notification icon and that way you'll get notified when I drop this video. It's, it's gonna be, it's really cool. I've got some good footage of it already. But they didn't pay me or anything. They just sent me um, these, uh, a couple of these Black Fly edition without any you know, guidelines or anything. They're all gonna be my reviews. I love this. Um, I, separate from them, this is my own personal opinion. This is, it's, it's really fun. It, it turns fly season into hunting season. So um, if you don't have something like this, I love having this around the shop for those, those pests. But uh, that's it for the tool VIP section. Well, if you're still watching, just want to take a second and thank you. If you got some value from this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. You hit that bell icon, you'll get notifications when I upload videos in the future. Um, outside of that, I just wanted to thank you guys for building with me today and I'll see you next time.